All right, picking up right where we left off, section two. Studies have shown that employees are happier, healthier, and more productive when they work in an environment in which something. Okay, so one is serial comma, it's gonna be A because all of those adjectives are in the comparative form. Uh, two, I need to read the paragraph. New buildings may be designed uh, may be designed with these studies in mind, but many older buildings were not resulting in spaces that often depend primarily on artificial lighting. While employers may balk at the expense of reconfiguring such buildings to increase the amount of natural light, the investment has been shown to be well worth it in the long run for both employees and employers. It provides the most appropriate introduction to the passage, so don't be random. In which temperatures are carefully controlled? No. That affords adequate amounts of natural light? Maybe. That's thoroughly sealed to prevent? No. In which they feel comfortable? It's B. Okay, nice. For one thing, the lack of exposure to natural light has a significant impact on employers' health. A study conducted by 2013, in 2013 by Northwestern University in Chicago showed that inadequate natural light could result in eye strain, headaches, and fatigue, as well as interference with the body's circadian rhythms. Sounds like studying for the SAT. Workers in offices with windows sleep an average of 46 minutes more per night than workers in offices without windows. Circadian rhythms, which are controlled by the body's biological, oh, so this is possessives. It should be the biological clocks of the body, like the body singular, so body should be singular possessive. Body, C, influence body temperature, hormone release, cycles of sleep and wakefulness and other bodily functions. Disruptions of circadian rhythms have been linked to sleep disorders, diabetes, depression, and bipolar disorder. Like any other health problem, these ailments can increase employee absenteeism, which in turn is, because the subject is which, which is referring to employee absenteeism, which is singular, and then it can't be C, because being is always wrong. Employees who feed less than 100% and are sleep deprived are also less prone to work at their maximal pr productivity. One company in California, something, when it moved from an artificially lit distribution facility to one with natural illumination. Okay, so I could do three again. I remember when I read three, I thought that it was a little weird that it was interrupting the two sentences that like the first, the one right before ended with circadian rhythms, the one right after picked up with circadian rhythms. I feel like this one might be a little bit of like, oh, like C, like it interrupted the circadian rhythms. I'm going to check all of them, though, just to make sure that they're all lies, because it does not take into account whether workers were exposed to sunlight outside. Okay, I don't know why that would have to be a reason, so I don't think it's D. Like, it wouldn't be better if they made, if they added more information to this sentence. It would make them, the interruption of circadian rhythms even larger. Yes, because it supplies quantitative, it doesn't give us well. Because it explains the nature of bodily functions, ex it doesn't. Okay, so then it's C, because A, B, and D are lies. For six, uh, Employees who feel less than 100% and are sleep deprived are less prone to work at maximum productivity. One company in California, let's see, saw so five uh, gained a huge boost in its morale, saved a great deal. Of I think it might be like B because it's talking about productivity. Is there a graph that goes along with this? Saw five percent. Yeah, I don't think it's A because it's like morale wasn't isn't what they're talking. About. They're just talking about productivity. So then, if I wanted to keep it really like on track, then I think it's B. Uh, in context, which choice best? Oh, optimization. Artificial light sources are also costly aside from lowering worker productivity. They typically constitute anywhere from 25 to 50 percent of a building's energy use. So they, they cost a lot. Okay. Aside from lowering worker productivity, artificial light sources are also costly, typically constituting anywhere from, okay. The cost of artificial light sources aside from lowering worker productivity, typically, this is a rewording, isn't it? Because the original sentence said that artificial light sources are costly. Like it was like sources is the subject and then verb are costly. Predicate adverb? Predicate, is it? I'm not sure what the term is. So the cost of artificial light sources is a rephrasing of this. This means that they're taking some liberties with this that I'm not sure were warranted. Typically constituting 25 to 50% of a building's energy use, artificial light sources lower rock worker productivity and are costly. Another rewording, and then it's also changing the meaning of the sentence. It's making the productivity and costly and elevating them both to the same level where the original sentence was emphasizing how much it costs. Artificial light, so artificial lights which lower worker productivity and are, so, oh, same problem. I think it's A, okay. Yeah, hopefully. When a plant in Seattle, Washington was redesigned for more natural light, the company was able to enjoy annual electricity cost reductions of 500,000 each year. Redundancy, it said annual, D. Among the possibilities to reconfigure a building's lights is the installation of full pane windows to allow the greatest degree of sunlight to reach their office interiors. Businesses can install light tubes. These, uh, that can't be A, that's a comma splice. A C, so 10 is C, or slash period is C, which are pipes placed in works, workplace roofs to capture and funnel sunlight down into a building's interior. Uh, I'll come back. Well, no, we can do this transition one, I think. So the first, the sentence before is that there's a lot of possibilities, and the one after is that you can install light tubes. I don't think it's therefore. 
oh, it's alternatively, right? Because like they were talking about full pane windows and then they're like, oh, here's an alternative. It's like, you can use the light tubes. Cool. Just don't pick thus because that means that you're establishing cause and effect relationship between it, meaning every time you install full pane windows, that, that's the reason why you install light tubes, which isn't logically true. Uh, glass walls and dividers can also be used to replace solid walls as a means through, means of, isn't the phrase means of, be? Means of distributing natural light more freely. So vocab and context. Considering the normal, blah, 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 blah. Great. Just as travelers take road trips today, just as travelers taking road trips today may need to take a break from food at a rest area along the highway, settlers traversing the American West by train in the mid 1800s often found themselves in need of refreshment. I think that A, a is correct because themselves is plural and they're referring to settlers plural. However, food available on rail lines was generally of terrible quality, sad. I'm going to read uh, uh, the whole paragraph because 13 is the main idea. Slash one is the main idea. Uh, blank. Fred Harvey, an English board entrepreneur, decided that needs to be connected. Uh, Fred Harvey, an English board entrepreneur. It's going to be D so that we can parenthesize an English born entrepreneur, rendering the sentence as uh, uh, deleted, making the sentence say Fred Harvey de decided to open his own restaurant. Business to serve rail customers. Beginning in the 1870s, he opened dozens of restaurants and rail stations and dining cars. These Harvey houses, which constituted the first restaurant train in the United States, were subject verb agreement. It has to be plural. It's Harvey houses was the subject. They said it a while ago. They hope you forgot about it when you read the relative clause studying with which, but it's still the subject. So they said were unique for their, right? The Harvey house for their high standards. Yeah, because it's the high standards of the Harvey houses, which is still plural. So then B. Uh, the menu was modeled after those of fine restaurants, so the food was leagues beyond the sinister. It's evil? Okay, that sounds weird. I think it's going to be like C, like it's abysmal. It's terrible. Let's try 13. Uh, okay, it's found in, however, food available on rail is of terrible quality. So I don't think the answer is going to be D. I really doubt that in a main idea question, they're going to like let me take the easy way out. Despite having worked for, uh, he lived in it to capitalize, I think it's C, talking about the food later in the paragraph. His restaurants were immediately successful, but Harvey was not content to follow conventional business practices. Uh, I don't know, so I'll read the whole paragraph. Although women did not traditionally work in restaurants in the 19th century, Harvey decided to try employing women as wait staff. In 1883, he placed an advertisement seeking educated, well-mannered, articulate young women between the ages of 18 and 30. Response to the advertisement was overwhelming, even tremendous. And Har is that redundancy? I think it's B. And Harvey soon replaced the overwhelming tremendous. Then Harvey soon replaced the male servers at his restaurants with women. Those who were hired as Harvey girls joined an elite group of workers who were expected to complete a 30-day training program and follow strict code of rules for conduct and curfews. In the workplace, the women donned identical black and white uniforms and carried out their duties with precision. Not only were such regulations meant to ensure the efficiency of the business and the safety of the workers, but also, but they all, there's correlative conjunctions, so not only, but also. And then following the not only, there was an independent clause. So like, were such regulations, such regulations were meant to ensure subject, verb, object, subject, verb, helping, verb, so we need the, the portion of the sentence after the but also to be grammatically parallel as well, meaning it has to be a full sentence too. So but they also helped D because that's the one that contains a subject after it. The other ones don't. Uh, and then it, it, the reason why the they is like in between the button also is because in English we think it sounds nicer than saying but also they helped. I think you can say but also they helped, but it's kind of like convention to say but they also helped and just kind of put it in between the but also. Okay, so for seven, is this paragraph done? No. In return for the server's wagers, the position paid quite well for a time, seventeen fifty a month, plus tips, meals, room and board, laundry service, and travel expense. Okay. Positions for immediately friendly. It was not content to follow. I think that that's okay because it was talking about how he unconventionally like hired the Harvey girls. Interesting. That's irrelevant. Oh, so don't delete. I think I'm gonna check for lies because it does not logically flow from the previous. I think it might flow logically because it provides a logical introduction yeah because it provides specific example in support of arguments made elsewhere in the passage i think like it's not sentence isn't good in a paragraph because it's supported supported by stuff like outside of that paragraph so let's see 20 which choice most logically follows the previous sentence in return for the service or the position paid quite well for the time so it's positive the growth of Harvey's business coincided with the expansion of the Santa Fe Railway. Okay, this is random. Harvey would end up opening dozens of restaurants and dining cars plus 15 hotels, random. These benefits enable the Harvey girls to save money and build new and exciting lives for themselves in the so-called Wild West, maybe. Compensation was considered excellent at the time, although may not seem like much money by today's standards. Hella random. Okay, so see. For as long as Harvey houses served rail travelers to the mid 20th century, working there was a steady and lucrative position for women. Living independently and demonstrating an intense work ethic, the Harvey girls, comma, 
because that was just like a present participial clause. So D, the Har dependent clause. The Harvey Girls became known as transformative for in the American West, inspiring books, documentaries, and a musical. Oh, maybe, but read everything. Advancing the roles of women in the restaurant industry and the American workforce as a whole, the Harvey Girls raised the standards for restaurants and blazed the trail in fast-changing landscape of Western territories. Yeah, I think it might be good because this one's talking about how they had like a positive influence. Uh, a, maybe, because it serves a tradition, transitional point in the, uh, I don't think it was. It was the whole thing was positive, right? Yeah. No, because it should be placed earlier in the past. You know, I don't know, because it contra contradicts always wrong in these. Okay, do A. Most effectively, optimization. Marketed as smart, fresh, the chemical 1-MCP, one 1-methylcyclopropene, one has been used by fruit growers since 2002 in the United States and elsewhere to provide the crispness and lengthen the storage life of apples and other fruits, which often must travel long distances before to be eaten by consumers. Great. 1-MCP lengthens storage life by three to four times when applied to apples. This extended life allows producers to sell their apples in the off-season months after the apples have been harvested. Whoa. I don't know we eat them that late. When applied to apples, one MCP lengthens storage life by three to four times, allowing producers to sell their apples in the off season months after the apples have been harvested. It had a decent amount of pauses, but they were kind of like, uh, what's the word? Respectable pauses. Like I felt like they had a good reason for using them. They're separating clauses. B, producers are allowed to sell their apples months after, this is a rephrasing, isn't it? Producers are allowed. It wasn't passive voice like that before. Yeah, it said this extended life allows producers. So weird. One MCP lengthens storage life when applied to apples by three or four times, allowing them to sell their apples. This has some awkward pausing in it because, like, by three to four times, I think you don't want to. You wouldn't necessarily have to put the pause there. So, even it has kind of like the same pausiness of A, except in awkward places. So I feel like it's not optimized. D. Months after apples have been harvested, producers are. It's passive again. So A, I think. At a cost of about one cent per pound per apple, MCP, however, one MCP is not a panacea for fruit producers, so they kick great. One MCP works by eliminating a fruit's production of ethylene. It is, that's a comma splice that can't be right. It should be D, whereas ethylene, a chemical that causes fruits to ripen and eventually rot. While one MCP keeps apple tight and crisp, we don't say apples are tight. Okay, that's a little weird. I think it's firm. Yeah, because, okay, firm. It also limits, while MCP keeps apples firm and crisp for months, it also limits their scent production. You know, there, referring to apples, which was plural, and then so we have to use there. This, this may not be much of a problem with certain kinds of apples that are not naturally very fragrant, such as Granny Smith, but for apples that are prized for their fruity fragrance, such as Macintosh, this can be a problem with consumers. That will reject. That, I don't know why you refer, refer to consumers as a that when they're people. I think it's gonna be like, who? Who will reject the apples? Yeah, you can't pick B because that would create a comma splice again, so independent, comma, independent, bad. But some fruits do not respond as well to one MCP as others did. It's do, isn't it? Do, B. And some even respond adversely, given that there's, everything is present tense in this sentence. Furthermore, some fruits, particularly those that naturally produce a large amount of ethylene, do not respond as well to one MCP treatment. Take Bartlett pears, for instance, unless they are true. Okay, this is gross. Take Bartlett pears, for instance. I think it should go like, Take the pears, for instance, and then colon. I should read the whole sentence before I make a choice. Okay. Take Bartlett pears, for instance, unless they're treated with exactly the right amount of one MCP at exactly the right time. They will remain hard. Oh, they will remain hard and green until they rot. So there, there is an independent clause later on here. So we can't have take Bartlett pears and they will remain hard and green together in the same sentence unless we separated them with comma fanboys or something like that, which isn't given here. So we definitely do want to separate these two. So it's going to be. B is, or D, but then I think that the for instance is meant to go with the take Bartlett pears, because like if you read that with the previous sentence, they're like, some some apples or whatever don't respond well to eth ethylene, and then they're like, for example, look at the pears. I know the for instance is at the end of the take the pears sentence, but it functions as though it's at the beginning. Yeah, conjunctive adverbs, or like those those transition words, when they're sort of like, their word order can be kind of like flexible, and then so if you put it at the end, a lot of times it'll have the function of just acting at the beginning of the clause. Okay, so to make this paragraph most logical, sentence four should be placed. But some fruits do not respond as well to one MCP as others do. So wherever it turns negative. Worse by limiting fruits production, ethylene. Okay, so that's good, sentence one. Well, it keeps Amazon, it also limits their scent production. That might be bad. For the, uh, but some fruits do. It might be after one. I think it's after one or after two. Let's see if we can find uh, if two and three go together. While one MCP keeps apples, it also limits their scent production. This may not be, oh, it has two and three have to go together because the this is referring to limiting their scent productions. I think it's after one. B. 
Data in what graph? I miss what graph? Oh, later. Okay, cool. Finally, research is main idea. I see a bunch of main ideas coming up, so that's why I'm reading this paragraph from the top. Finally, researchers have found that 1MCP actually increases susceptibility to some pathologies in certain apple varieties. For example, empire apples are prone to a condition that causes the flesh of the apple to turn brown. Traditionally, apple producers have dealt with this problem by leaving the apples in the open air for three weeks before storing them in a controlled atmosphere with tightly regulated temperature, humidity, and carbon dioxide levels. As the graph shows, the flesh of untreated empire apples that are first stored in the open air undergoes yeah, that's right. Undergoes something uh, than the flesh of untreated that are immediately put into storage. So the flesh of empire apples that are first stored in open air. Empire apples, untreated apples, light gray, placed in controlled atmosphere after three weeks in open air, immediately placed in controlled atmosphere. So we're talking about the small, the small gray bar. The flesh of untreated apples that are first stored in the open air undergoes like a lot more browning. Roughly half of their flesh turns brown. Their flesh browns even when they are put directly in a control room, but not when that's wrong. Their flesh turns brown when they're first stored in the open air, but not as quickly as the apple flesh in the untreated group does. What? Oh, I'm, I'm being, okay. I, I'm losing my mind because that's the wrong question. <sighs> okay, so 31. <laughs> Which choice offers an accurate duration of the game? So it's going to be like much more browning. So twice as much as seven. Flesh of untreated apples and they're first stored in open air. Much less browning, sorry, because the gray bar is super low. So, so D. However, now we're on question 32. Yeah, good job, me. However, when empire apples are treated with one MCP, their flesh turns brown when the apples are first stored in the open air, though not under other conditions. When they're treated with one MCP, it, oh, they, they, they kind of turn brown they equally, sort of. Roughly half their flesh turns brown. I think it might be that. Wait. Regardless of whether the apples are first stored in the open air, let's double check. Empire is treated with one MCP. One MCP is the black bar. Are they roughly 50% in both categories? Maybe. Flesh turns brown. The, turn, their flesh browns when they're put directly in a controlled environment, but not when they're stored in open air. No, it has to be like kind of similar. Their flesh turns brown when they're first stored in the open air, though not as quickly. Percentage of flesh brown. I don't know if it's speed. Okay, so I don't know like the speed that they brown at. Because if I measure and then one of them is just more brown, I don't know that it happened more rapidly necessarily. Not sure. So that, I think that that's going to be a answer towards B. Although researchers continue to search for the right combination of factors that will keep fruits and f fruits fresh and attractive, the problem may be that consumers are overly concerned with superficial qualities rather than the actual freshness of the fruit. The writer wants a conclusion that conveys how the shortcomings of 1MCP presented in the passage affect the sh actions of people in the fruit industry. Which choice best accomplishes this goal? Okay, so that's pretty specific directions. They're asking, like, we want something negative about 1MCP. We wanted to talk about the actions of the fruit industry. Many of the improvements, I, I was reading A over again, I think it, like, may maybe. Many of the improvements in fruit quality they've discovered so far require trade offs in other properties of the fruit. Uh, this doesn't talk about, like, well, it, I th it doesn't talk about the fruit industry people. For now, many fruit sellers must weigh the relative values of aroma, color, and freshness when deciding. It might be that too. It must be acknowledged that one MCP, despite some ad inadequacy, has enabled the fruit industry to ship and store fruits in ways that were impossible before. This is way too positive. I think it's A or C, and we can pick the one that's the least random. Superficial qualities in the actual. I don't know if they. Oh, I don't think you can say that the consumers are the, the. The consumers are the fruit industry. Wouldn't it be the sellers? Just checking the directions again. How it affects the actions of the fruit industry. The problem is that maybe are overly concerned with superficial quality. Yeah, because like if you pick A, then you're saying that one MCP is the reason why people are concerned with superficial qualities, but I don't think it ever made that connection. It's just, it just might be like common behavior of people. So C, I think. For Michelangelo's David to Vincent Van Gogh's series of self-portraits to Grant Wood's iconic image of a farming couple in American Gothic, these that was just a bunch of prepositional phrases, so that wasn't a full sentence, so we need like a comma. D, I think? So from that to that to that to that, comma, these works, from, from that to that to that to that, works by human artists have favored representation of members of their own species to those of other species. Yeah, I think it's D. Indeed, when we think about animals depicted in well-known works of art, the image of dogs playing poker, popularized in a series of paintings by American artist C.M. Coolidge, dash, to complete the parentheses that was going on earlier, so B. Maybe the first and only one that comes to mind. Yet some of the earliest known works of art, including painting and drawings of tens of thousands of years, 
paintings and drawings tens of thousands of years old found on cave walls in Spain and France. Poor subject verb agreement. What was the subject? Some of the earliest known works. So some is one of those words that can be singular or plural and where you actually have to look at the prepositional phrase to tell if it's singular or plural. So some of the er earliest known works, works is plural, that'll influence that uh, some making it plural as well. That would turn it third person plural. So they portray C. Uh, portray, I don't know. Nor has the artistic homage to our fellow creatures entirely died out in the millennia since, despite the many years have passed between them and now. He wants to link the first paragraph, the ideas that, let's go check the ideas that follow. I'm just reading these uh, real quick first. So, special attention being paid to domestic animals such as cats, uh, even the most famous museums and people, not, okay. The St. Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, one of Russia's greatest, oh, maybe the Russian answer, has long been a productive partnership with the, the cat. For centuries, cats have guarded this famous museum, reading it, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, so then I think that this is going to be D, because it's talking about Russia specifically, or B. I know it mentions the cats, but then I don't think it's talking about domestic animals such as cats. If you say domestic animals such as cats, then you're allowing for all the other domestic animals too. So I feel like it's a little bit too like broad. I think it's going to be D. Uh, blah, blah, blah. For centuries, cats, <laughs> that's what the SAT sounds like to, to me in my head, just blah, blah, blah. For centuries, cats have guarded this famous museum, ridding it of mice, rats, and other rodents that could damage the art, not to mention scare off visitors, right? See, because it's, it's parallel with like, they could damage the art and they could scare off visitors. Peter the Great introduced the first cat to the hermitage in the early 18th century. Later, Catherine the Great declared the cats to be the official guardians of the galaxy. <laughs> Yeah, Catherine the Great declared the cats to be the official guardians of the galaxies. Continuing the tradition, Peter's daughter Elizaveta, Elizaveta introduced the best and strongest cats in Russia to the Hermitage. Today, the museum holds a yearly festival honoring these faithful, faithful workers. Sentence five, continuing the tradition. Oh, God. What, tra isn't it, what tradition? First, introducing it later, Catherine declared. Introducing them to the Oh, maybe after sentence three, because the tradition then would be the um, introducing the cat to the hermitage, and then like continuing the tradition, Peter's daughter introduced the cats to the hermitage, and then later, Catherine the Great declared the cats to be official guardians of the galaxies. I think it's C. These cats are so cherished by the museum that officials recently decreed original paintings to be made of six of them. Wait, like decree it's b commission they like asked people to make the art in each a cat is depicted upright in a human-like pose and clothed in imperial era russian attire the person chosen for this task digital artist elder zakharov painted the cats in the style traditionally okay so this isn't isn't this job plus name job plus name comes up a lot on sat grammar don't put a pause in between them if the job is before it just counts as the part of their first name so like digital artist comma elder zakharov is like weird so it's going to be anything that doesn't do that like C or D. And then let's see how the rest of the fits with the sentence. A person chosen for this task, digital art of Zechariah, painted the kit. Yeah, so I think that it's answer choice D because it creates a nice parenthesis that you can delete around digital artist Elder Zechariah. And then it doesn't use like the comma in between the job and the first name or in the name. Uh, he painted the cats in the style traditionally used by portrait artists and in doing so, in doing so, presenting the something. One portrait, the Hermitage Court Chamber Herald Cat. Uh, main idea again, so we're going to re keep reading. Sadly, includes an aristocratic tilt of feline ears, as well as a stately sweep of tail emerging from the, emerging from the stiff scarlet and gold of royal court dress. The wise, thoughtful green eyes of the subject of the Hermitage Court outrunner cat mimic those of a trusted royal advisor. The museum occupies six historic buildings, including the Winter Palace. Form okay, I think it's, that's random, but we'll go back to it. Some may find it peculiar to observe cats portrayed in formal court poses, but these felines by mass, <laughs> I don't think it's A. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do 44. Yeah. But these felines, uh, acting as the lead predator, uh, hunting down and killing, that's a little scary. It's D, I think, because like the other ones make the cat sound murderous and it doesn't match the paragraph. 42, which corresponds with what? 20 again, 20 in the test? In doing so, present, well, such so the examples that follow. So they're talking about like how cats are dressed up like people. As noble, it might be a. Imagine to catch unique characteristics of each cat. I don't think the cats were actually like the aristocrats. Wait, what were the characteristics? It wasn't the one like their ears. I don't think a tilt of feline ears is a unique or thoughtful green eyes. I don't think that's unique. Oh, this might be a trap answer. I think 
Then it's commenting on the absurdity of Dread, that's too negative, indicating that the cats were very talented mouse cats. <laughs> I guess 42D is meant, like if you pick 42D, then they hope that you pick something else in 44, like one of the killing ones. But I think that same reason as 44 is around 42 is super random. I think 42 is A. Uh, 43 sounded super random when we got to it. So the museum occupies six historic buildings. I don't think we need to know that because it fails to indicate why. No, I don't think the issue was that it like didn't say enough. I think the issue was that it said too much because it provides background information that's irrelevant. D and oh, lo and behold, we're done. On to section three. 